The Phantom is PSO2's second Scion class. It's best known for having fast and protected casting, a more flexible and ranged form of dodge countering, a new way of using photon arts that requires you to shift them before using them, and the ability to place marks on enemies that can later be detonated for added DPS and resource management. For weapons, it uses katanas, rifles, and rods, though it uses them a bit differently than other classes that use those weapons, as it has a whole new set of PAs for each weapon that are all learned by default when unlocking the class, and they never need to be upgraded either. Furthermore, this class can be used as a subclass, and brings lots of unconditional damage and quality of life features to whatever you pair it with. Though, do be aware of the fact that it offers no survivability whatsoever when using it as a sub. Now, being a Scion class, it does have a requirement to unlock, and this is to acquire the title for having two different level 75 classes. After that, you can talk to the NPC Coffee at the right side quest counter and pick up the client order for Phantom. After that, there are a few more things you might want to take note of for Phantom, which are the Phantom Practice Quest and the Phantom Class Trainer Kyoka. The Practice Quest will help you get a feel of how Phantom's photon art shifting works, though we'll be getting more into that in a few minutes. And then the NPC Kyoka, who's located on the far right side of the gate area's center staircase, will have a bunch of client orders for you to do, some of which will reward skill points. When it comes to mags, the Phantom has a skill that will raise every offensive power stat by 1 per point of dex in your mag. So on Phantom, a 200 dex mag will give you another 200 melee, 200 ranged, and 200 tech power. Best of all, this skill can be utilized as a subclass, and even stacks with Braver and Bouncer's dex mag skills too. When it comes to countering, if you dodge an enemy's attack at the last second, you will hear this audio cue, and then be able to perform a ranged counter during your next attack. This means that unlike Hero, you can decide on when to use your counters. But keep in mind, you can only save up to one of these at a time. Every type of attack you land will help you accumulate marks, and this is generally based on how many PAs or techs you use. These marks can then be detonated with a charged weapon action from any phantom weapon to restore some PP and deal some damage in a small AoE. A blue mark will be the first one to appear after you've landed a few hits, and when detonated it will restore 30 PP and deal moderate damage. A blue mark will then turn into a purple mark after continuing to attack it for a little bit, and when detonated it will instead restore 50 PP and deal a lot of damage. The Phantom also has its own version of a Focus Gauge, which can be built up over time by countering and landing attacks on enemies, and maxes at 2 bars or 2 stocks. Though, keep in mind that using the same PA or tech over and over will slow how fast this fills up. You can then use one stock of this Focus to activate the buff skill Phantom Time, under which you will be invulnerable for the first 5 seconds, and for the entire 20 second duration you will have an additional half a second invulnerability when dodging, and a 20% decrease to PP consumption. On top of that, with the skill Phantom Time Mark Plus in the skill tree, your mark accumulation rate can triple in Phantom Time. And by taking Phantom Time Finisher in your skill tree, you can reactivate Phantom Time from your sub palette to perform an extremely strong attack, which will also have iframes throughout. With the katana, you will make one long cut in the air, which will be followed up by a big photonic slash. With the rifle, you will send out a bunch of your bits that will simultaneously perform a series of attacks with you in an area around your target. And with the rod, you will simply rain down a bunch of dark energy from the sky. Now, when it comes to tech casting, it should first be noted that the Phantom cannot use compound and mini compound techniques. But even so, this is when Phantom is arguably at its strongest. As we mentioned at the beginning, the Phantom has very fast and protected casting. But there's another perk it has too. Which is, every single time you cast a tech with the rod, you will perform an additional AoE or long range attack depending on the tech you use, both of which will restore about 6 PP. So, this is just one more tool in Phantom's kit that will allow for better resource management. When it comes to Phantom's weapon actions, when used normally, or tapped, the weapon action for all Phantom weapons will perform an attack and then shift the next photon art you use into a different attack. This also grants some movement and generous iframes on startup, which allows it to flow very well in combat. The Katana's weapon action will perform a ranged slice and restores PP. When it's charged, you'll perform an even bigger ranged cut that shares about the same range and damage as the uncharged version. When using the rifle, the weapon action will fire out homing bits that will deal some damage and restore PP. When charged, you will instead fire off a stronger single energy blast that will pass through everything in a line. Also, if you take the skill Bullseye in the skill tree, when detonating a purple mark with a rifle, a blue mark will immediately appear on your target. Then, for the rod, its weapon action has you shoot out an orb that can restore PP. 
However, after charging it, you will instead perform a deceivingly big AoE slice that's great for popping multiple marks at a time. So, just to recap, on any phantom weapon, tapping the weapon action is usually reserved for when you want to shift PAs or make use of its iframes. And charging the weapon action is usually when you want to detonate a mark. But it should also be mentioned that it offers frontal guard frames when releasing. Moving on to each weapon's attacks, and starting with the katana, its normal attack is split into three quick hits. The first two deal moderate damage, while the third spinning hit deals about the same damage as the first two hits combined. Its step attack is then basically what you might expect from the katana, though it does offer some quick guard frames and restore some PP. Next up, if you took the skill quick cut in the skill tree, after every attack, when sheathing your katana, you will see a white bar or line over your character. And if you use the weapon action when it's visible, you will quickly approach your target, deal damage in a clonal AoE, and have some PP restored, all while having about a half a second of invulnerability. Furthermore, using quick cut will pre-shift the next PA you use, and this significantly improves the flow and DPS of the katana on Phantom. Though, you may not always want to use a shifted PA after quick cut, so to cancel out of the pre-shift, simply perform a normal attack, dodge, or jump. Getting to the katana's photon arts, we first have Schmetterling, which will simply have you close in on a target, whether it be in the ground or in the air, and follow up with a few slashes. This also has super armor for just about the entire animation, so while you won't be interrupted, you can still take damage. Then, when shifting Schmetterling, you will instead perform an attack while sliding through enemies, and will be invulnerable until you stop moving. Now, since Quick Cut will shift your next PA, and this is a shifted PA, you can use this along with Quick Cut back to back, resulting in a combo that will get you around pretty fast while also keeping you decently protected. Next up is Folterzite, and this is probably the simplest of all the Katana PAs, as you just sit in one spot while pumping out some consistent close range DPS. Do keep in mind, this PA has no form of protection whatsoever, but is really nice to spam on stationary targets. Then, Shifted Folterzite will have you slash while retreating in the opposite direction of which you are facing. There are iframes present during the beginning of the animation, but these turn into super armor during the slashing part at the end. Now, you'll most likely find yourself using this as a protected disengage, but there's actually another interesting way to use this as well. Which is, if you quickly hold the opposite direction of the way you want to move right when you activate the PA, you'll move in your desired direction and perform a forward or sideways slicing attack rather than a retreating slash. Furthermore, if you're locked onto something, this becomes significantly easier to pull off, as you can start holding a directional input before you even use the PA, as the lock-on will keep you facing forward. Next up, there's Rosenschwert, which is yet again another gap closer the katana has access to. Compared to the other katana PAs, it's all around pretty fast and surprisingly strong too. Besides that, there's not too much to it, other than the guard frames it has during the quick backstep at the beginning of the animation. When shifting Rosenschwert, you will instead jump up and perform a cut that will leave a lingering damage over time effect on the field for a few seconds. You will be invulnerable at the beginning of this, but this will go away as soon as you attack. All in all, it's a decent PA to use here and there to keep your DPS up. For the last of the Katana PAs, we have Volkenkratzer. Unshifted, this PA will first prop you up into the air, to then have you come crashing down to the ground to deal AoE damage around you. During the start of the animation, you will be invulnerable and can hold a directional input to move in that direction ever so slightly. Then, Shifted Vulcan Kratzer will instead have you kick out a ranged projectile. Like its unshifted version, you will have iframes at the beginning of the animation, but will lose them as soon as the projectile is launched. Moving on to the rifle, its normal attack has piercing properties, and its attack chain is split into three hits. Like the katana, the third hit deals about the same damage as the first two hits combined. On top of that, you can reposition a little bit between normal attacks with directional inputs. For its step attack, you will dash in a direction and fire a single shot that deals moderate damage and will also restore some PP. Just like the normal attack, you can also perform an additional little slide in any direction you choose by holding a directional during the step attack, and being locked onto a target makes this much easier to do too. For the first of the rifle PAs, there's Coco Sturm, which will fire off three bursts and wide sweeps around you, and you can delay the second two bursts of this by holding the PA down. In general, it has good AoE, is rather quick, and does decent damage, so it can be used in a lot of different situations. As far as protection goes, you will have super armor throughout the entire PA, and there's also some iframes briefly present between each burst as well. 
When shifting Kugelsturm, your rifle will turn full auto and continue to fire for as long as you hold the PA down. And when releasing it, you will perform a twirling animation that grants brief invulnerability. Next up, with Knockdown Griff, you will toss out a bit that will explode after it travels a short distance. When held, it can travel much further and will detonate when letting go. And on detonation, it will deal two instances of damage. The first of which is where the bit explodes, and the second is dealt in an AoE around that. So, if you have it explode directly on your target, you will land both hits, making it great for AoE and bosses. When shifting Knockdown Griff, you will run forward and fire off two big energy blasts that will pass through and damage everything in a line. Holding this PA will allow you to run and jump around at high speed as if you went through a dash panel, but will consume PP every second. Due to its quick startup and piercing properties, you can use this for everything from single target DPS to clearing hallways. With Vibretchen, 4 bits will travel with you in any direction you choose and will all fire out a laser beam when you stop moving. By pressing a left or right directional immediately after activating this PA, you can instead have the bits line up horizontally as you move. Though you can do the same thing with a lot less effort by simply using lock on, and then hold the directional before even using the PA. The last thing to take note of is that there is about a quarter of a second of invulnerability at the beginning of the animation. Then, when shifting for Bredgen, you will hold on to a bit while it rises up into the air, during which time you will be invulnerable. After you've stopped moving, you will let go and the bit will then stay for about 12 seconds dealing damage in a small AoE around anything you are targeting or that is in the area. The last rifle PA is Strafe, and when used normally, you will throw out a bunch of bits that will continuously attack a target for a few seconds. The moment the bit leaves your hand, you will have just under half a second of iframes. Furthermore, this can be held to target up to 4 different enemies or parts too. When shifting strafe, you will drop a bit that acts like a landmine. If there is anything close enough to it, it will explode after a short delay. You will have iframes until you stomp your foot, and this applies to when used in the air as well. So if used when in the air, you will essentially be protected until you reach the ground. In general, this PA is nice to use on grouped up enemies, or for camping spawns, or to even get back to the ground very fast. As far as rifle combos go, there really aren't any. Just make sure you always have your damage over time PAs in the field, which are Strafe and Shifted Verbrechen. Then, just use whichever PA you think fits best for the situation, as many of the rifle PAs deal pretty good DPS. Something else to take into consideration is that if you always have your damage over time PAs going, and you get hurt, all you have to do is tap Megaverse and you'll be healed up right away without having to do anything else. When it comes to the Rod on Phantom, all of its attacks scale off of tech power, but deal melee damage. The exception to this is techs, as they function normally. What this means is that whether you want to use PAs, techs, or everything the Rod has to offer, you only need to ever focus on tech power. For the Rod's normal attack, you will simply swing it around at melee range in sets of 3 hits, each restoring some PP, and with the third hit dealing the most damage. Then, its step attack is just another type of melee range swing that restores some PP. Getting to the PAs, Moss and Varnish Tongues will create an AoE explosion from an orb in front of you. This can also be held down to deal continuous damage around the orb at the cost of draining your PP every second, and will then explode when letting go, which grants brief guard frames. Furthermore, if you continue to hold this down for long enough, the orb will change color and start to deal more damage. Best of all, you can rotate your character when holding this, so you can somewhat reposition if need be. When shifting Mass and Burnished Dungs, you will spawn a Dark Ring around yourself that continuously deals damage and slowly increases its radius until it goes away. By itself, it may not seem like too much, but if you pair it with Ramagate Zero and some other AoE techs like Gigrant Zero or Abarda, you can quickly rack up a lot of damage and Phantom Marks. Next, with Rough Concert, you will slash the air three times. The first two hits are close range, while the last hit does more damage and is ranged. All in all, it's good for some quick medium to close range DPS and works decently enough for both single targets and for mobbing. Then, when shifting Rough Concert, you will instead simply throw out a ranged vertical spinning blade that does moderate damage. Next up, Shortsekansei will be a disengage or gap closure depending on how you use it, and grants invulnerability during both versions' movement when you are invisible. Unshifted, you will retreat at high speed after performing a quick attack. Now, you can actually cancel out of the backdrop animation for this by using another PA or normal attack directly after the attack lands. That being said, you can turn this into a whole combo with a normal attack 3. So, it will go something like Unshifted Swartzy, Unshifted Swartzy, 
normal attack 3, and then repeat. When shifting Schwetzekatze, you will simply do the exact opposite of the previous, and will teleport forward and perform an attack. Now, the only thing to keep in mind for this one is that without a target, you will not travel very far. Outside of that though, it's rather straightforward. For the last of the Rod PAs, there's Eisenflugel, and when used normally, you will toss out a bit that will act like a thrown talus, allowing the next tech you use to originate from the bit's location. On top of that, due to the skill Phantom Talus S charge in your skill tree, when casting from this, you will have a 50% decrease to your tech charge time, but again, keep in mind that after that one cast, the bit will leave the field. And when shifting Eisenflugel, you will instead release an orb that will continuously explode while tracking enemies, and there's not much else to it. When it comes to tech casting, no element is off limits to the Phantom, so just use whatever you think is best for the situation. But there are a few all around great techs that I would suggest you look into. Ramic at 0 will increase your DPS if you are in melee range, and works very well with other PAs and techs in your kit. Gigrant 0 does all around great damage, and can be paired with Ramic at 0 and Shifted Mass and Vernage Stungs for even more damage. Next, Grants is a nice long range tech that works great on fast moving enemies. Ilgrants Crafted for Damage is one of the strongest techs in the game, and is great against closer and slower moving enemies. Rabarda is nice for clearing out weaker groups of enemies, but more importantly, it works great for mark accumulation. Next, Gazande is still as strong as ever, and its close to medium range works well with Phantom's counters. Sephoi Zero is one of your movement techs and can even move you vertically, but will stop upon contacting an enemy or a surface. And lastly, we have Ilzande, which is your other movement tech, and while it can only move you horizontally, it will allow you to travel through enemies. Before we dive into the tree itself, I'd like you to keep in mind that by the time you are level 95, and have all 14 client order skill points from the NPC Kyoka in the gate area, you will have enough skill points to take just about everything you would need in the tree. What you're seeing on screen right now is the most generic level 95, 109 skill point phantom skill build that uses all three weapons and will benefit players that have a lower maximum PP. Generally, the only things you would change about this would be to not take weapon specific skills for weapons you don't use, and to try to keep as many points out of photon stream as possible depending on your max PP, and then just place those points into whatever else you may want instead. Getting right to it though, like all classes, there are a bunch of skills you can learn for free at the top but require a specific level to unlock. We then have all of the pre-learned skills on the far right column, with the only exception being Tech Charge Perfect Attack all the way at the bottom. And this works exactly the same as the Force and Techers skill of the same name that gives Charge Techs the effect of a Perfect Attack. Moving back up to the top left, Phantom Marker will allow you to accumulate marks on enemies when landing enough hits. For more about marking, see the marking section at the beginning of the video. Next, like all classes, your level 80 skill maxes at 5 and gives 1% damage per level. Then, your 85 skill, which by the way does not cost any skill points to learn, is a 3 second passive buff that will activate when your health drops below 50%, during which time all status effects will be nullified and you will have an 80% damage reduction. Furthermore, this only has a 30 second cooldown. Moving down a row, Sprint Tech Charge simply allows you to move faster when charging a tech. And then with Stealth Tech Charge, when charging a technique, your movement speed will further increase and you'll also turn into an orb and have a full second of invulnerability. Phantom Talus S Charge reduces your charge time when casting attack after using the built-in Talus feature of the Phantom's Rod PA Eisenflugel. Next, Phantom Mag will convert all the decks in your mag into all three offensive powers. This means a 200 dex mag will give 200 melee, 200 ranged, and 200 tech power, and you can use this as a subclass as well. Moving straight down, we have the Phantom Weapon Bonuses that give lots of unconditional damage for simply using a katana, rifle, or rod. Moving to the left, Attack Jelen gives all of your attacks a chance to inflict Jelen, which weakens enemies. There's then also Jelen Redress, that for only one skill point, will decrease enemies attack damage by another 15% when inflicted with Jelen. Now these two skills may not seem like much to you, but there are other skills and even S grade augments that benefit from you having Jelen on your target. Next we have the active buff Phantom Time, which lasts for 20 seconds and consumes one of your two stocks of focus to activate. During Phantom Time, you will be invulnerable for the first 5 seconds, but for the whole 20 second duration, you will have an additional half a second of invulnerability when dodging, and a 20% decrease to PP consumption. 
By taking Phantom Time Finisher, you can reactivate Phantom Time from your sub palette to perform an extremely strong attack, which will have iframes throughout. There's then two more skills that can augment Phantom Time. The first is Phantom Time Mark Plus, which allows you to accumulate marks up to three times faster during Phantom Time. And the second is Phantom Time Jelen Plus, which can significantly increase the chance of you landing Jelen. However, this isn't usually taken, as it's actually pretty easy to proc Jelen as it is on Phantom with the skill Attack Jelen alone, and your skill points could generally be used much better elsewhere. The last bit for this section has to do with the Dodge Counter mechanic. So, Dodge Counter Shot will essentially save up to one Counter Shot after you successfully dodge an enemy's attack at the last second. Then, the next time you perform an attack, you will fire out a ranged Counter Shot, and this will become a big part of your total damage output at the end of the day. And this also works exactly the same way for each of the Phantom weapons too. We then also have Dodge PP Gain, which simply returns up to 20 PP when successfully dodging an enemy's attack. And since you'll be dodging and countering a lot, this is nice to have. Now, because of the way this tree is laid out, I'd like to jump down to the bottom and cover each section one by one, and we can then work our way up to the top from there. As that way, I think I can give you a much better understanding of the class. So, starting at the bottom right, Tech Short Charge, at max, sacrifices 30% of your tech damage in return for cutting your tech charge time in half, and also reducing your tech PP cost by 30%. Phantom PP Restorate increases your active and passive PP regen by 30%, which is pretty amazing. Next, we can get another 20 PP right from the skill PP High Up. Now, I usually urge against taking straight stat up skills that cost a lot of points, but you may want to take some, if not all, of PP High Up due to the next two skills we're about to go over. The first of which is Photon Stream, and this increases your damage based on your maximum PP. However, the damage bonus does not increase as it levels up, though the PP to conversion damage rate does, so with level 5 Photon Stream, you would need less maximum PP to get the max bonus. Ideally, to save as many skill points as possible, you'd want to have this at the lowest level possible, while still getting that full 10% bonus. So, feel free to use this chart when deciding how many points to use. The second skill is Critical Stream, and this grants a crit rate and crit damage bonus based off your total PP, with its maximum bonus attainable with 300 PP. And since Critical Stream's conversion rate is so much lower than Photon Stream's rate, you should be maxing it. Next, All Attack Bonus grants an unconditional damage boost to all powers and is truly amazing for only 5 points. We then have Full Drive, which increases your focus accumulation by up to 50%. Moving up a section and starting on the left, Mark PP Drain and Mark Heal simply return PP and HP when accumulating a purple marker. They are actually pretty nice, but you may end up wanting to spend your skill points elsewhere. These next three skills are specific to certain phantom weapons, and I would suggest taking each of them for every weapon you use. Ambivalence increases marker and focus accumulation when using techniques with the rod. With Bullseye, when you detonate a purple marker with the rifle, a blue one will instantly appear in its place. And when using the Katana, Quick Cut will allow you to follow up any attack with a fast gap closer. Moving on, the entire next row up has to do with mark accumulation. Zero and long range mark accumulation respectively increase how fast you land marks when close and far away. Keep in mind that due to Phantom's dodge countering nature, no matter which weapon you use, you'll likely be in close range more times than you think, so don't overlook either of these. Then, Chase Mark Boost increases mark accumulation when attacking an enemy afflicted with the Stannis or Jelen. Since you'll be landing Jelen a lot with the skill Attack Jelen, this only helps you build marks even faster. Last but not least, there's Lord of Thorn. And this one is quite interesting, as you essentially trade off how fast you can build marks in return for more damage when detonating them. Now, many seem to agree that taking up to 3 points is the sweet spot. However, I would even go as far as to suggest to not even bother putting points into this until you are near max skill points. And even then, it may not be worth taking unless you have a lot of PP, as that would allow you to forego maxing Photon Stream and would then leave you with more skill points to put into this. And that's about it for Phantom Skill Tree. Generally, if you have all 109 skill points at your disposal, you don't need a separate skill tree when using it as a subclass. But if you think you do, just take some of the points out of the main class only skills and then fill them in wherever else you want. And while we're on the subject, let's quickly break down what Phantom offers as a sub. First off, there's the Phantom Dex Mag skill, which will convert Dex to all three powers. So no matter what class you pair the Phantom with, all you'll need is a Dex Mag. And this also stacks with Bravers and Bouncers Dex Mag skills to grant even more stats. There's then Sprint Tech Charge, which increases your movement speed when charging attack. All Attack Bonus gives an unconditional boost to every offensive power. Full Drive increases Focus Accumulation by 50%, so classes that use the Focus mechanic will greatly benefit from a Phantom sub. Next, any class can take advantage of the Photon Stream's 10% damage. 
Then, Critical Stream gives so much potential crit rate that even classes that didn't bother stacking crit in the past can now consider it, as it grants 40% crit rate with just 200 PP and up to 60% crit rate with 300 PP. Let's also not forget that it grants us crit damage too, so crit based classes will enjoy this just as much. PP high up simply gives us more PP, which is always nice, and it goes hand in hand with the two previous skills. Then, just about every class can benefit from Phantom PP Restorate, which increases your active and passive PP regeneration by 30%. And last but not least, Tech Short Charge works as a subclass too. So, whatever you pair Phantom with, you will not only be able to use Techs, but be able to charge them very fast as well. Now, with all that said, you've probably noticed that Phantom offers absolutely no survivability as a subclass. So, try to make up for that in your main class's skill tree or in your gear. When it comes to ring choice on Phantom, there are eventually going to be three Phantom specific left rings. Now, you don't need any of these to play Phantom properly, but depending on your playstyle, you might want to look into some of them. Phantom Sidestep Shift will shift your next PA after dodging. This is actually pretty handy, but it can also be a double edged sword. We then have Phantom Marker Bomb, which causes your mark to explode at the location it was placed when you detonate it. And there's then Photon Lock-On Bomb, which instead causes your mark to explode at your current lock-on point. After that, just pick whatever rings you think might suit your playstyle the most. Though there are some you may want to consider. Atomizer Fanatic is an amazing ring that will allow you to use Atomizer items twice as fast, will increase their potency by 60%, and will also grant invulnerability when using them too. So with this ring, Star Atomizers become a fast and reliable AoE heal. And you can now safely and quickly resurrect other players. There's then Leaping Dodge, which is a really nice addition to almost any class, as at max, you can use this from the sub palette every 5 seconds to perform a jump that will take you higher than a double jump would, and grants invulnerability during most of the animation. You can also perform a single jump after this to go even higher too. A Mag Excite Ring will increase the rate at which your mag attacks and increase its damage by 300%. If you use a ranged attack like Megid for your mag's auto action, you'll be doing a bit of extra damage and quite frequently. And for the last one I'll mention, a Crit Strike Combined Ring is nice as it grants 20% crit rate and 3% crit damage to all powers. Even with 300 PP, the Phantom only ever has 65% crit rate, so the added crit rate is really nice. And so is the additional crit damage, since it will stack with the 5% crit damage you get from Critical Stream. As far as the rest of gearing is concerned, I plan to dedicate an entire video to endgame gearing in episode 6, and in that I'll be mentioning which weapons and S-grades might suit each class best. But for now, one thing I would like to mention is that you might want to look out for the augment called Phrase Decay, as it grants a 5% damage bonus when attacking an enemy under the effects of Jelen. And as a Phantom, you'll be landing Jelen on almost everything you fight, so this is a really nice way to get another 5% damage. If this name changes on Global, I'll be sure to mention it near the top of the description. And that should just about do it for everything you might want to know about Phantom before jumping in. There's definitely a bit more complexity to the class than what I've shown here today, but I hope this has given you a solid foundation to work off of. And with that, take care.